guys, welcome to All Electronics. In this video, we're gonna take a look at high frequency microwave voltage controlled oscillators. Let's go! I'm Gregory, and this design is based on a project from Matthias Widmer, call sign S53MV. The prototype was assembled using the SPIDER method and can be tuned from 700 MHz to 1.7 GHz. The oscillator is supplied with 12 volts and we can tune the frequency using a variable voltage. We can see that we can tune the frequency from UHF, let's see the frequency, 600 megahertz to almost 1.8 gig, very high tuning range. When we design VHF and UHF oscillators, a common family of oscillators is of the negative impedance type. Negative impedance oscillators use impedance transformation from an active device, like these common base copits topology, to introduce a negative resistance across a tank oscillator to get spontaneous oscillation. The problem is that the phase shift introduced by the active device has very low Q, and the phase noise performance of the oscillator will be very low. So for a microwave oscillator, it's better to have a truly two-port device, like a common emitter amplifier, where the gain from oscillation comes from the S21 parameter and not from the negative impedance converted on the active device. In this design here, Matthias Widermer used a tuned LC network here with three varactors, and we couple the collector output from the active device to its base closing the loop. For oscillation we need phase shift here, the gain comes from the S21 parameter and the phase shift needed comes from the network. It's important to note here guys that we have three varactors. We have three varactors because we need to spread the capacitance variation across the network. This helps us to get a higher turning range, helps to provide a stable impedance from the input to the output and also, if the spread variation of the capacitance of the varactors across the network, we have a very flat S21 parameter for the phase network. This helps the oscillator to get very flat in the output uh, amplitude. It's hard to see here, guys, but the inductor is only this coil here. This half turn coil is the inductor, and the output is coupled by this. Uh, proximity inductor here, we have a loop here using the leads of this capacitor to couple the signal to the output. This low coupling helps to uncouple the output impedance from the oscillator, helping to stabilize the frequency for impedance variations at the output. So the output is actually a inductor coupled, loosely coupled here using the leads of this capacitor here. This network here is very clever because we can tune three varactors using only one vo control voltage here that is spread across the varactors through the inductor here because at DC the inductor uh, is a short so we can at DC we can control all the three varactors using only the DC voltage of this node here. The collector outputs coupled by a low value capacitor. This varactor here is used to couple the signal to the base of the active device and it also uncouples the DC biasing of the active device from the control voltage. For microwave oscillators, as we cannot control the, the minimum capacitance of the available varactors on the market, we're gonna use a very low inductor. And this is very interesting because in this design the inductor is only a piece of wire connecting these varactors across. We can see here from the diagram that we have almost more parts in the biasing of the active device, a BFG591 here, because it's the bias that you define the S11 and the S22 parameters of the active device. So here we are bi biasing the transistor, the active device here, using an active bias scheme here. We have practically a current source that is monitoring the current in the collector of the active device and is controlling the current in the base here. 
to precisely maintain the same current in the collector. The voltage reference used to control the current on this current source is a red LED because a, a red LED has a great, a, a very good voltage drop and it almost don't have noise. So a LED is a great zener diode for this kind of application. Noise is important because any noise introduced here on the biasing of the active device will become phase noise at the output of the, the circuit. So it's very important to be very bias controlled and this is why we have a lot of parts here making the biasing of the transistor. Changing the control voltage, we can turn the output. We have almost one gig of turning range. It's really a lot, guys. This circuit can be used as a part of a synthesizer. We can make a synthesizer using this. As example, you can mix the output of this circuit with a constant frequency oscillator to down convert this range from zero to almost one gig. So we can easily make a frequency synthesizer from zero DC to one gig using this topology. We can couple more coils here to the resonator by using more uh, uh, inductor links like this to couple the signal to a prescaler to use in a PLL as example. But if you're gonna use this output as it is, it's important to have an amplifier here, another active device here, a common emitter probably, to really uncouple the output from the resonator because even with this approach here, the impedance here uh, in the output will be reflected to the resonator and will change the frequency. So it's important to uncouple with another stage here to be very isolated from the output to the resonator. So guys, the circuit works. It's really nice to see that we can make a VCO almost to two gigahertz using only few parts and the spider technique. We can talk more about the spider soldering technique here that I use it in, in next videos. And I'm also studying microwave prototyping techniques. This is a circuit I designed and show it in the last video. And we can talk more about this technique here to prototype microwave circuits also. Matthias Widmer also uses this topology uh, using an interdigital filter. An interdigital filter in the place here of the phase network he got oscillators, very simple oscillators going up to 4 GHz. So we can try this in the next design. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and see you in the next video.